Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Swobbly, Swobbly Does Stuff. This is my full top 50 countdown of the best arcade games of 1980s. Some classic games, some shoot 'em ups, some sport games, some fighting games. There's all sorts of games. Some of them you'll love, some of them you've never heard of. They are fun to play and I really did enjoy playing every single one of them bar a few. So, if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, share it out to a buddy or two. Consider subscribing to my channel for some more gameplay, classic arcade games, new Xbox games, all sorts of games. But for now, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, leave a comment or two. Are your favourite games in the top 10? Have I missed any games out completely? Let me know in the comments below. Enjoy the video. Starting off our countdown at number 50. Tapper, the classic arcade game from 1983, will have you on the edge of your seat as you serve up cold brews to thirsty customers. As the bartender, you'll need quick reflexes and precise timing to keep the beers flowing without spilling a drop. But be warned, the customers get more and more impatient as the game goes on and you'll need to work fast to keep up. It's fast paced gameplay, satisfying sound effects, a must play arcade game. Now at number 49. Step into the cockpit of Time Pilot, the thrilling arcade game from 1982. As a pilot navigating through different time periods, you'll need quick reflexes and sharp shooting skills to take down the enemy planes and futuristic spacecraft. The vibrant graphics and pulse pounding action will keep you entertained for hours on end as you blast your way through wave after wave of enemies. But beware, the challenges only get tougher as you progress through the game, so step in and get ready to face the dangers of the past, the present and the future. Number 48. Kung Fu Master, the action-packed arcade game from 1984 will have you mastering the art of martial arts as you take on wave after wave of enemies. As a skilled fighter, you'll need quick reflexes and precise moves to take down your foes and make your way to the top of the tower to rescue your beloved Sylvia. With its challenging gameplay and colourful graphics, Kung Fu Master will keep you on the edge of your seat as you battle your way to the top. So put on your Kung Fu robes and get ready to prove your skills in this classic arcade game. Number 47. Get ready to blow bubbles and pop your way to victory in Bubble Bobble, the addictive arcade game from 1986. As one of the adorable bubble dragons, you need quick reflexes and strategic thinking to navigate through each level and defeat enemies by trapping them in your bubbles. With its colourful graphics and catchy music, Bubble Bubble will keep you entertained for hours on end as you work to rescue your dragon friends and defeat the final boss. One of my favourite games from the arcade. And number 46. Shinobi, the fast paced arcade game, 1987. Puts you in the shoes of a skilled ninja as you take on a variety of missions to defeat your enemies and save the world. Quick reflexes and precise movements are needed. This game's bloody hard. You need the art of stealth to combat and take down waves of enemies and bosses. Very challenging, keeps you on the edge of your seat. Grab your katana and get ready to slice and dice your way through Shinobi. Hopefully you did better than I did. I really sucked. Time for number 45. Defend Humanity in Xavius, the classic arcade game from 1982. As a skilled pilot flying a futuristic aircraft, you'll need quick reflexes, precise shooting, to take down enemy planes and ground-based defences. The challenge gets tougher as you progress through the game, so be prepared for intense action and heart-pumping gameplay. Unfortunately, this is one game I really didn't like and I absolutely sucked at it. Maybe it was one of your favourites. Here's number 44. Afterburner is a classic game from 1987 that puts you in the cockpit of a fighter plane as you take on wave after wave of enemy aircraft and ground based defences. You'll need quick reflexes and precise shooting to master the art of aerial combat to emerge victorious. Has immersive gameplay and intense action which keeps you at the end of your seat as you soar through the skies and take down your foes. Buckle up and get ready for an adrenaline fueled flight through the skies in Afterburner. One of my favourites at 43. 
Get ready for a frantic fight for survival in Robotron 2084, the classic game from 1982. As the last surviving member of the Williams family, you'll need quick reflexes and precise movements to take down the waves of robots and other enemies as you try to save the world. The fast-paced gameplay and intense action will keep you at the edge of your seat if you work to complete each level and emerge victorious. Grab your joysticks, get ready, take on the robot horde in Robotron 2084. Number 42 Zaxxon's a game from 1982 which for me was a major disappointment, one of the few games I absolutely detested. You're supposed to fly through a three-dimensional world and avoid obstacles while taking down enemy planes and ground-based defences. However, for me, the controls were rubbish and it was impossible to complete, even the first few levels. I hated the bloody game. I really hated it. You might have liked it, I didn't. Not always about what I like though, many people love the game. Here's number 41. Elevator Action is a classic arcade game that was developed and released by Taito in 1983. Never actually played this myself in the arcade game, but I do remember playing it a few times on different consoles or computers along the way. The game features fast-paced action, challenging gameplay, and it's not a bad game. It's quite fun. I enjoyed playing it. I did give it a few goes, in the end, nah, bit shit, don't want to play it again, rubbish. Now we're into the top 40. Another Taito game, this time Popeye from 1983. You control Popeye as your basic goal is to save your girlfriend, Olive Oil. I don't reckon he could pull her in real life. I remember playing this the first time ever at Thorpe Park in my mid-teens. Loved the game, thought it was fun. It's classic platform action where you get to beat up Pluto or Brutus, depending on which country you come from, after you've eaten your spinach. It's still a fun game. I enjoyed it. Number 39. Battlezone is a classic arcade game developed and released by Atari in 1980. Atari made so many damn good games. Set in a futuristic world, you're in control of a tank. And your mission, defeat enemy tanks and complete various objectives. It's well known for its vector graphics which gives it a nice 3D look and feel. It's fast paced and challenging. It's also quite a frustrating game, but still great in today's gaming world. Now number 38. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Classic arcade game developed and released by Konami in 1989 and based on the popular animated series of the same name. You play as one of the four characters, the Turtles, and you fight against the evil Foot Clan and their leader, Shredder. You can choose to play as any one of the four, go around beating the hell out of things. It's also just been released on console, uh, updated, snazzy graphics, love it. Here's number 37. Dragon's Lair, made by Cinematronics in 1983. Bit of a strange one, used a laser disc instead of actually working out what the graphics would be and displaying them. The basics of the game was you move the joystick at the right time to move your character to dodge the bad guy or the peril or whatever was happening. If you didn't move at the right time, you died. It cost a lot to play because you died a hell of a lot. Didn't like it. Number 36. Contra is another classic game from Konami, made in 1987. Set in the near future and follows the story of two soldiers, Bill and Lance, whoever named them, God knows. You battle against the forces of the evil Red Falcon organization. It's always one of those games that I thought I'd absolutely love playing. I really didn't like the game. I just found it a little bit tedious. It wasn't a game that I wanted to put my money in. I know many people would disagree with me. Tough. Number 35. Mario Brothers, I can honestly say I didn't even know this game existed in the arcade. I only thought it was a Nintendo game on the sort of Super Nintendo and the NES or whatever they were called in America. Super Famicons. I never knew this existed in anything. I never saw it in the arcade. If I had, I would have been playing it. It's actually quite a fun little platform game. Kind of based on every other platform game that was out around the time, but it is bloody enjoyable. Give it a play if you ever can. Here comes number 34. 
Ghosts and Goblins from Capcom, made in 1985, follows the adventures of brave knight Arthur as he battles against hordes of ghosts, goblins and other weird and wonderful monsters in order to rescue, you guessed it, a princess from the clutches of the evil demon Astaroth. It was one of those games that I never played in the arcade but I did play it on the Mega Drive. I always found it really difficult to play and even playing it here on the emulator still found it incredibly hard. Don't like it. Ooh, number 33. Street Fighter is probably one of the most world known fighting games developed and released by Capcom in 1987. A lot better than the film they released with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Carly Minogue. What a crock of crap that was. Anyway, this game fantastic lots of special moves to learn multiplayer beat the crap out of your mate still working today i don't know what version they're up to seven or eight but everybody loves a bit of street fighter it's number 32 moon patrol 1982 from a company called irem never heard of them but i do remember playing it back on the old sinclair spectrum and it was released then by a company called ocean huge amount of wonderful games from them basic idea of it drive your buggy along jump over holes shoot stuff in front of you shoot stuff above you don't die it's not a great game in today's standards back then yeah not bad today yeah it's a bit pants and now number 31 burger time 1982 by data east classic game puts the player in the shoes of a chef named peter pepper what a name who must navigate through a series of kitchen themed stages whilst avoiding enemy food items. I remember playing this or a very similar game back on the Intellivision, probably about 1983-84. It's brilliant, really catchy music, fun game, drop burgers, squash things. Quite difficult, yeah, I like it, it was enjoyable. Now we're into the top 30. Punch Out is a boxing simulation from 1984 released by Nintendo. You play a young fighter named Little Mac who must battle against a series of incredibly challenging opponents in order to become the champion. It's known for its colourful cast of characters, each with a unique fighting skill and personality. Challenging gameplay that requires you to carefully observe your opponent and plan your attacks. It's really fun to play, even if it's really dated. Number 29. Outrun is a very classic game from Sega, released in 1986 and is a racing simulator that puts you in the driver's seat of a sports car. It's one of those games that I remember playing back in the day and really enjoying it and thinking this is fantastic. Whether you're sat in a full-size cockpit in the arcade or just at home on your home console or computer. But by today's standards, well, driving games have moved on a hell of a lot from this, and this is very dated. One of my favourites, 28. Track and Field is another Konami hit made in 1983, and it's a series of Olympic theme events that the player must complete by rapidly smashing buttons or pressing them in a sequence. Each event includes running, long jump, shot put and more. It's fantastic fun. I was really good at this in the arcade. I would always managed to get my name up at the top of the scoreboard i was just a little bit rubbish at the javelin for some reason but i loved it number 27 galaxian released by namco in 1979 i can't believe this wasn't higher than number 27 i first played this during a little holiday school club thing in around 1980 1981 10p ago fantastic i used to spend my entire lunch money on this game i got really good at it which is not showing in this video because i sucked it's been a long time but it is a classic game and loved by millions of people number 26 donkey kong jr released in 1982 by nintendo's the sequel to the original donkey kong which is a fantastic game this one though, you must rescue his father from the clutches of Mario. Player must navigate through a series of challenging stages, and they are challenging, avoiding obstacles and enemies. Never saw this one in the arcade, I knew it existed from console versions, but never ever played it until today. Well, last week when I recorded the video, really good fun. We're into the top 25. Tron was developed and released by Bally Midway in 1982, based on the popular science fiction film of the same name and puts players in the role of 
Ron the program. It's a fun game. It was one of those that had a massive joystick and a spinner. Four different areas of play. I loved the light cycles. Unfortunately, when I played it, I sucked at it. Classic game, classic gameplay, really good fun. Doesn't really stand up to today's games though. Number 24. Paperboy is another Atari game published in 1984 and puts you in the role of a paperboy. Of course, clues in the title. Basic premise of the game, deliver newspaper to houses along a predetermined route while avoiding obstacles and enemies. Bloody hard game, impossible to control the bike, couldn't steer for shit, couldn't aim the paper in the right place. Absolutely loved the idea of the game, absolutely sucked at every single part of it. Number 23, Star Wars. Wow, what a game, absolute classic, another Atari masterpiece from 1983, though only fantastic if you could sit in the actual cockpit. There was just nothing like it. Multi-part game, Death Star, Atat Walkers, all kinds of stuff. Use the Force, Luke. Red 5 standing by, and all that malarkey. Bloody fun game. Number 22. 1942, very classic game from Capcom. Published in 1984, it's a scrolling shoot 'em up set in the Pacific theater of World War II. It was always one of those games that everybody raved about. But I never played it back in the day. And when I played it recently, I thought it was just a bit meh. It's not great. I can see how it was brilliant back in 1984. But nowadays, yeah, it's just a little bit tame, a little bit boring. Nah, not for me. Number 21. Rampage by Bally Midway in 1986 is a classic game with giant monsters who must destroy cities and defeat military forces. If I remember rightly, it was a three player game. All can jump in at the same time, smashing up buildings, eating people, punching helicopters and just causing devastation. It's a must play fan of arcade games. It's brilliant. Kind of enjoyed playing it again this time around if I'm honest. Wow, we're almost there. Now we're into the top 20. Tetris, 1984 by Nintendo. What a classic game. Everyone in the world has heard of Tetris. The basic idea of the game is to place falling blocks in order to complete rows, which then clear from the playfield, giving you points. There are so many different variations of this game. Every single console, computer, anything. Even microwaves can probably play Tetris. It's just one of those timeless classics that everybody likes and enjoys, but suck at. Number 19. Tempest is another one of those Atari classics released in 1981, with the idea it's just the shoot stuff. You use a spinner, basically just spin your weapon around, shoot down into the uh, 3D shapes, blasting the enemies and their bullets. Very simple idea, bloody difficult in practice, really fun to play though. It's got memorable music, challenging gameplay, and it's one of those ones that fans just love. Time for number 18. Spy Hunter is another game from Bally Midway, released in 1983, and puts you in the role of a spy driving, heavily armed car, tasking with defeating enemy vehicles and completing various objectives, whilst avoiding obstacles and enemies. It's really hard. It's a fast game. I used to love playing this back on my Amiga, and I think I also had it on the Spectrum as well. Didn't really go much on it this time round though. Really dated, but still fun in a way. Number 17. Missile Command, another one from Atari, released in 1980, and is one of those games that I'd absolutely love to own the tabletop version. I remember playing it in a pub down in Old Portsmouth in the UK. Upstairs, tabletop version, swishing the trackball around, blasting the little lines and the enemies, and losing very quickly. Still a great game today, although with this game I was playing it with a mouse, which makes it so much more fun and easier. Sweet 16! Double Dragon is one of those timeless classics. It was released in 1987 by a company called Technos. Never heard of them myself absolutely love this game and this is one of those games that you could play oh, hundreds of years into the future and still enjoy it two players 
Billy and Jimmy Lee beating up bad guys. Some lots of little special moves, colourful scenes, multiple extra versions of this game. Wow, love it. Number 15. Pole Position from Namco, released in 1982. It's one of those games where back in the day it was amazing. It was one of the most fun racing games that you could play in the arcade. Look at it nowadays. It's just a pile of crap. It doesn't stand out today in any form or shape. Yeah, it is initially fun to play, but I really didn't enjoy playing this just to get a recording. Rubbish. Number 14. Hubert from Gottlieb in 1982. Challenging puzzle game in which players control the character Cuba, cute little guy. Idea: navigate through a series of platforms and change the colours. Very simple in uh, principle. Actually playing the game, it's really difficult. I could never get the hang of jumping at 45 degrees around a little uh, weird and wonderful shape. But it is one of those games that is a timeless classic and still fun to play today, even if I did really suck at it. Time for number 13. Joust from 1982, made by Williams Electronics. It's one of those games that puts you in control of a knight riding a flying ostrich. You must defeat enemy pterodactyls. Who comes up with these ideas? It's one of those games that's really difficult to master, but once you get the idea of it, it's really, really fun. Never played it in the arcade. I do remember playing it on the Amiga and the Spectrum. <sighs> one of those games that I enjoyed, but really didn't do very well at. What a classic at number 12. Gauntlet, released in 1985 by Atari. The game is just a basic dungeon crawler where you can play up to four players at the same time. You could join in at any point, run around, shoot things, kill things, find keys, eat food. It was fun. I piled so much money into this game. It was fun to replay it though. Um, not quite as fun just on your own. You need a handful of people to make it really enjoyable. Still a classic game though. Number 11. Miss Pac-Man, the classic arcade game from Midway, released in 1981, is the sequel to the original Pac-Man. Not quite sure why she's called Miss Pac-Man. Is she the divorced woman of Mr. Pac-Man? Or is she just his sister that never got married and became an old spinster? Who knows? Thing is, the game, fantastic fun. Just as much fun as Pac-Man ever was. Same kind of idea. Eat dots, run away from ghosts, eat a power pill, kill ghosts. Love it. Favourite of the ladies as well. My all-time favourite at number 10. Defender, released by Williams Electronics in 1981, although I never actually played it until around 1985-86. It was one of those games where 10p used to last me around two to three hours playing the game. I loved playing it on the emulator, although it did take me a little bit of setting up to get the controls just how I liked it, like the original arcade machine. Absolutely loved this game. One of my all-time favourite arcade games ever. Number 9. Another masterpiece from Atari, made in 1979, Asteroids. Classic game, one of the original addictive shooting games that came out in the arcade. Never actually played it in the arcade. My experience was on the Atari console back in around 1980-81-ish. Loved the game, didn't actually own it. Stole it off my friend Mark. Don't think I ever gave it back either. Tough Mark. I haven't seen you for 30 years, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Number 8. Frogger is a timeless classic made by Konami and released in 1981. A fun game. Take your frog, run across the road, run across the river, jump into the little hole at the end. Such a classic game. Used to love playing this in the arcade. Also had it on the Atari console as well. And it was the one game that my mum used to play. Mum's never used to play video games, but she absolutely loved this one. Soon got on my nerves though. Still a very playable game by today's standards. Number 7. Super Mario Brothers by Nintendo in 1985. Not actually in the arcade, but one of the most played games of the decade back on the Nintendo Entertainment System and Super Nintendos. Everybody loves a bit of Mario. There are so many different variations, homebrew versions. It's a classic game, simple thing. Run around, jump on things, collect stuff, get to the end. 
Fantastic fun, love it. Time for number six. Space Invaders, originally released in 1978 by Taito, the game's a shoot 'em up which players control a spaceship, tasking them with defeating waves of enemy ships and defending against their attacks. It's one of the most classic games ever. Every single console, every single computer had its own version of Space Invaders and so many companies brought out their own version of this simple game. One of the most classic games ever. Now it's time for the top 5. Dig Dog is a Namco classic released in 1982. It's a puzzle game in which players control the character Dig Dog. Go through a series of underground tunnels and defeat enemies by inflating them or dropping rocks on them. What was the guy smoking when he invented this game? It's a simple game. It's rather addictive. It's got catchy music, iconic characters. It's a must play game. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Inflating people? What? At number four. Centipede, right at the beginning of the 80s by Atari. It's a classic shoot 'em up which you control a spaceship. Your idea? Defeat waves of enemies and bosses, including the centipede. It falls down from the sky towards the player. You shoot up and kill it. It's fast action and challenging gameplay, and you need a bit of skill to get through it. Controlled by a trackball, which takes a bit of time to get used to, and those bloody spiders which splat ya. Magic. Now the top three. Pac-Man is probably one of the most iconic characters in arcade game history. Released in 1980 by Namco, it's a puzzle game in which you control the character of Pac-Man. Navigate through a series of mazes, collect dots, avoid ghosts. It's known for simple yet addictive gameplay and iconic characters. Everybody loves a bit of Pac-Man. You see the game, you know how to play it, you know it's fun. Kids love it, mums love it, grandparents love it. Classic game. In the number two spot, absolutely agree with this being at the number two spot. Namco made this in 1981, Galaga, classic arcade fun. It's a space themed shoot 'em up game which you control a spaceship and you're tasked with defeating wave after wave of enemy ship and bosses. It's got a bonus stage, you can shoot everything. It's one of those games where I just sit there and play it on my home arcade. It's never going to get old, it's always going to be fun. At number one. Now, here's the best game of all time, Donkey Kong, made by Nintendo in 1981. Back before Mario was even called Mario, he was called Jumpman. He had to rescue the princess, climb up the ladders, escape the barrels. Fantastic game. Not sure it's my number one of all time, but it is the most popular game of the 80s. Fantastic, enjoyable, love it. 